Hello and welcome to the Friday, September 23rd, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier today wrote about a trick that he saw being used to install Remco's RAT, a common remote access tool. The attack starts with a simple bat file. To obfuscate a file a little bit, the attacker added a byte order mark, FFFE, as the first two bytes, which causes the file to be displayed as UTF-16 in editors and the like. The problem with this is if it's UTF-16, then two bytes are considered one character. So typically what you're seeing is some... Chinese and other characters essentially gibberish. But if you're just executing the file, the byte order mark is ignored. And well, the file is just interpreted as ASCII or UTF-8. And uh, that way the script then runs just fine. Now, when it runs, it just uh, converts a base64 string using certutil into a second batch file. And that's where things get a little bit more tricky. The second batch file downloads a couple additional PowerShell files just uh, using curl.exe, but then it adds a registry key and executes FOD helper. Now, FOD, short for Feature On Demand, is a mechanism in Windows that will install features as they are required. Typically, things like language packs and such are not installed by default because they take quite a bit of disk space. So in case you're running into a spot where you need a certain language pack, the FOD helper can be used to automatically install it for you, which also means that FOD helper runs with elevated privilege. And what it does is it looks at that registry key to check what it needs to install. So what the script does is it sets the registry key to say, hey, FOD helper, run these PowerScript uh, files I just downloaded, and then it starts FOD helper, kind of uh, bypassing the UAC uh, protection. So neat little trick and definitely something uh, to sort of uh, watch out for. And Microsoft today released a security update for Endpoint Configuration Manager. The patch fixes a vulnerability CVE 2022-37972. This vulnerability has already publicly been disclosed, which is why Microsoft uh, is releasing this patch ahead of the next patch Tuesday. However, the vulnerability has not yet been used in any attacks, according to to Microsoft. The problem is that Microsoft Endpoint Configuration Manager could fall back to NTLM authentication and that would allow then for spoofing. So the update prevents this fallback. And fuzzing has been a very productive way in recent years to find vulnerabilities. The idea behind fuzzing is that an application is exposed to a wide range of more or less random input and then special software monitors the application to watch for code coverage, watch for crashes and other unusual uh, behavior that may indicate a vulnerability. But applying the method uh, has always been a little bit tricky and uh, typically required quite a bit of sort of custom coding and such to create all the test harnesses and instrument uh, your uh, test subject here, the code that you're testing to measure things like uh, code coverage. Security company Code Intelligence has now released an open source command line utility that's supposed to make this easier. The tool CI Fuss is supposed to make fussing easier and also more approachable. If you're trying it out, uh, let me know uh, what you think. And thanks to Gephardt also for pointing me uh, to uh, this tool. And some sort of good news, Apple released updates for iOS and watchOS today, but these updates do not fix any security vulnerabilities. The only reason for these updates is uh, they are sort of fixing uh, some uh, issues with uh, hardware that was released uh, last week and uh, this week. So... Um, you may not even see these updates being offered if you're not running any of the affected hardware. 
And that's it for today. Thanks again for listening. If you like the podcast, as usual, uh, tell your friends about it. Leave some good reviews in the podcast uh, source of your choice. If I missed the story that I should have covered, well, uh, let me know. Uh, let me know if there are uh, maybe any things that I should talk uh, more about. That's it. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.